Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Today we're taking a look at a pretty interesting motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the TRX50 RED. That's right, ladies and gents. This supports Threadripper 7000. Let's take a bit of a closer look, but as usual with the motherboard content, these videos are not reviews. They're just overviews so you guys can get an understanding of what this board is, how it works, and what it's got on it. Let's dive in. Here it is, ladies and gents, the Gigabyte TRX50 Aero D. Let's say I get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this board and spoiler alert, there's not a lot. First of all, we've got all of this documentation. There's no manuals here. Next up, we've got a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. Can't believe there's four sets here for a lot of storage. Next up, we've got this DisplayPort cable. This motherboard has USB 4.0 and DisplayPort pass-through, which I'll talk about a little bit later. There's also the Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. That's right, the AeroD has Wi-Fi 7. And then we've got this here. This is a thermal probe you can place inside your case. It will allow the fans to adjust themselves based on the internal temperature. There's also a microphone that can adjust based on how loud the system is as well. And finally, we've got the little G connector. This is basically to plug all your cables in for your front panel wiring. All right, let's unsheath the TRX50 AeroD and take a little bit of a close look at everything on this board. All right, first of all, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a three pin, five volt addressable RGB header and a 12 volt four pin RGB header. There are headers for things like TPM, for trusted platform modules, three PWM fan headers. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like RGB controllers and liquid cools and anything legacy. There's four more PWM fan headers for fans and then there's some buttons for things like clearing the CMOS and lastly the front panel connects for your lights and all your switches. On the right hand edge of the board there's a right angle USB 3.2 front panel header, there's four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives, there is a USB type C front panel header as well, four more SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives, three more PWM fan headers, there's also the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your TRX50 Aero D. There's a power button. There's a postcode LED screen and two more RGB headers. On the top edge of the board, there are two eight pin EPS power connectors to send power directly to the CPU. In terms of PCIe slots on this board, this has three full by 16 size slots. The top two are PCIe Gen 5 by 16, and the one at the bottom is a PCIe Gen 4 by 16 slot. Because this board is for Threadripper and Threadripper has plenty of PCIe lanes, these are all full size slots. The top PCIe slot also has a clip on it that allows you to open it easily when you've got a GPU jammed in there. For the VRM layout, this features a 16 plus 8 plus 4 digital VRM layout with 108 amp power stages. All of the top of the board is basically one giant heatsink to help dissipate all of the heat from the VRM. As well as that, there is a heat pipe that connects all of the heat sinks together for more efficient thermal transfer. This board features AMD's brand new socket STR5. This is a new socket for these new Threadripper chips. Let me show you how to open this. The socket has three numbers labeled on it as one, two, three, and to open it, it's in the reverse order of three, two, one. You do need to use a proper tool to open the socket, and this carrier here holds the CPU in place. This is an LGA socket, which means all of the pins are in the socket and it has 4,844 pins in total. That's a lot of pins. If we flip the TRX50 AeroD over and take a look at the backside, you can see that there's not a lot going on back here, but you can see the support for the top M.2 slot and the socket support. But other than that, nothing too special. For RAM, this is where it gets interesting. It has four DDR5R DIMM slots, which means it needs registered ECC memory. It supports up to a total of one terabyte of RAM at 7,800 mega transfers. Each individual module will max out at 256 gigs. The M.2 solution on this board is awesome. It is completely toolless and everything is held down with some clips. 
This is pretty typical of more modern Gigabyte boards, and it's very, very easy to get access to all of your storage. For the M.2 slots themselves, it's got three PCIe Gen 5 by four M.2 slots on the left-hand edge of the board. And the one closer to the center of the board is a PCIe Gen 4 by four M.2 slot. I wanted to show you guys this because this is interesting and something that I like on these boards. The clips for the drives are spring-loaded, so they're one of the better mechanisms. And to install a drive, it's really easy. You just push the drive down and it clips into place. How nice is that? For rear IO, we've got a Q flash button. There's the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7, two USB 3.2 ports, a line out jack, a microphone jack, display port in for the two USB 4.0 ports on this board. USB 4.0 also supports PCIe tunneling, which is technically Thunderbolt. There's also 2.5 gigabit ethernet, 10 gig ethernet and some more USB 3.2 ports. I hope you enjoyed that first look and a little bit of an overview of the TRX50 RAD. This one to me is pretty interesting because you may or may not know that I daily drive Threadripper and to be honest, I haven't got my hands on new Threadripper yet. I don't know why, AMD, if you are watching this, what up? We always cover Threadripper stuff. It's kind of our thing. Like we're always super focused on HEDT stuff. And for some reason we were forgotten. We even get all the Radeon Pro stuff, but for some reason, I don't know. I'm not trying to sound entitled, but it's something that we do cover on the channel quite a lot. And the fact that we don't have it is quite unusual. Well, that is at least until now because Gigabyte sent over this TRX50 RAD for us to check out. You might be wondering, what are you gonna be doing with this board? Well, ladies and gents, my editing PC has not been upgraded since Threadripper Pro 3000. So I'm finally going to build myself a brand new editing PC. It's only been how many years, Clev? Three or four years oh. with, with similar hardware? Yeah, it's been quite a while and I've been on the same hardware forever. And I want something a little bit faster. So hopefully we get our hands on a chip very, very soon. The other thing is one part of all of like this studio renovation stuff that you may be seeing on the channel that I haven't acknowledged at all is the reason why we don't have any videos talking about the renovation stuff is I've been working on renovating my office as well as part of the studio as for one big video. I know I'm going off topic here, but yeah, like that's part of that. And then this build will be part of that, which is gonna be very cool because it's something that you're probably not expecting. Anyway, let's talk about the Gigabyte TRX50 RAD. Well, it's got a lot of things that I like for motherboards. First of all, all of these new toolless M.2 slots are epic i just love the fact and i've talked about this before i can just unclip this pull off the heat sink drop a drive in the slot and you're ready to go it's just so easy no screws required and it's nice that we don't have tiny little m.2 screws in motherboard boxes anymore for some reason i always seem to lose because i'm an idiot you know how that goes the build quality of the board is as expected for these trx50 boards pretty good one thing that i kind of wish this board had and maybe it's just me being used to it but eight dim slots i think that's kind of important but at the same time trx50 doesn't do eight channel memory it'll only do quad channel memory so i can see why gigabyte decided to go this way with a trx50 board it does make sense but having the potential to have more slots means you can have modules with lower density. Boards like the TRX50 ROD support up to one terabyte of memory, but it means you need 256 gig modules per slot. And memory like that is gonna cost, I'm gonna just 
have a stab in the dark, it's going to be at least $10,000 in memory. So, I mean, Aussie dollars, because in Australia, we get absolutely reamed for everything. The other thing with the TRX50 Aero D, compared to a lot of the other TRX50 boards and WRX90 boards, this board is not very big. This is EATX, but as far as EATX goes, because EATX isn't a real standard, the TRX50 Aero D is not that big, right? And that's, that's a good thing because even though it is EATX, you could probably squeeze this into some cases that aren't compatible with EATX. I hope that makes sense. Don't take my word for it, but we will try this on a couple cases as well, all right? Just so we know for a fact. We don't speculate. And that's one thing I really love about covering HEDT is the fact that it's not accessible, but it's ridiculous. Like the performance you get is crazy. And that's why I haven't switched off Threadripper for years. And like the other thing with that is for our workflow, it doesn't seem like there's a lot going on with the edits because maybe they don't look that way, but it's the way we shoot it and it's the things that we do in post-processing that requires extra CPU horsepower. Things like stabilizing footage on something like my Mac Studio, I could stabilize maybe 20 clips and that stabilization, even with the M2 Ultra or the M2 Max, would still take upwards of 20 minutes on a Threadripper. It's got more cores. It won't even take five minutes, so yeah. That's the reason why I stick to PC for editing because PCs are just more powerful and that's a fact. I think this one's gonna be pretty interesting when we get around to building with it and I'm pretty excited to build with it. So make sure you subscribe to see that whenever that drops, but if you're interested in the Gigabyte TRX50 Aero D, they're going for around 599 US dollars or around about 1,149 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. Prohibitively expensive for the regular person, but if you need a board like this, you know why you need it. If you need a Threadripper, you have a use case for it. And fortunately enough, I have a use case for it, which is why I get so excited about this kind of stuff here on the channel. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there down below. And if you wanna get early access to videos, especially like these motherboard videos, we're on float plane. We've been on float plane for years. We were the first Aussies on float plane. How's that, Claire? Pretty cool. I think we're like one of maybe three Aussie creators on float plane now. But yeah, we were first. We were like the, in the first 10 creators on float plane, which is crazy. Anyway, um, I never say um. No, don't say um. That's a yucky word. What a yucky word. Disgusting. Yuck. Ugh.